Somebody seems to be joining. We're live. Aresh is here, um, mm. and I'm here. And, but take it away, Pat. Oh, okay, great. Well, sorry for all the fiddling and diddling here, but anyway, we're back in business. Um, so earlier, Laura, I think you were the first one to join. So uh, why don't you go first, if you don't mind? Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, so Segu and I paired on Friday on Visualizer to get Travis up and running. Um, we're going to work on coveralls this afternoon. Uh, we'll do a pairing session there. Uh, Patrick, I saw your request to review Hanesha's uh, PR. I'll do that later this afternoon as well. Um, other than that, I've just been busy on some client deliveries and have no blockers at the moment. Okay, sounds great. Uh, and my one logo was approved for ESAS. Sam told me this morning, so that was good news. Well, congratulations. I'm not sure what that is, Thank but you. it sounds good. <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. <It's>, yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Sam, would you like to go next? I think you were next in oh, line. Sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, going backwards from now, yeah, I was just um, reviewing pull requests on uh, website one from premium folks. Um, yeah, I see I've got some to work to do with local support pull requests as well, so that's outstanding. Um, yeah, just bits and pieces. I'm very, very excited. I guess over the weekend, a uh, premium pairing session with, with um, Marion on Sunday, and uh, we actually got a, we, I produced a series of diagrams actually about describing the uh, website one and async voter projects, and, and, and uh, yeah, it would be good to get those into our main systems and, and got introduced her to the event manager project as well. Um, yeah, I wasn't able to do the Bob Martin scrum on Sunday. Uh, I've, I've actually removed that from being repeating on Sunday just because my uh, children's football and birthday party commitments just seem to make Sunday. But I, I, I did do the Saturday one, but there was uh, no, I was doing I was there by myself. Um, I guess I'll keep doing the Saturday one because I can reliably be there at two p.m. UTC. But uh, it feels like I I missed a trick there really because there was this period when you know the ASIC voter project was getting started and lots of people were kind of like trying to kind of have scrums at the weekend and they were like oh do I press what do I how does it there was all this like you know on uh, uh, Monday I'd like review the Slack. And it's like, oh, if only there'd been an organizing force there on a Saturday to say, yes, here's the, the hangout and you can join. And so anyway, I mean, I guess I'll keep on doing that on Saturdays for a while. We will see. Um, yeah, big exciting thing over the kind of weekend that was um, on local support. Um, we've got one sponsored premium member um, who, you know, giving support to, got in her first um, pull request and uh, that's been reviewed and merged in. And that's, I just read a blog post about it this morning. It's very exciting that our... You know, we've got a, we've got an anonymous U.S. based uh, developer donating the uh, Agile Ventures premium fee to give to su support to someone who can't afford that, and and then get you know this very valuable in context learning experience. So that's that's great. Um, yeah, but that's that's the update going forward today. Meetings with Dree, hoping I can maybe land a, a paid project from them. Um, we've got our Agile Book Club meeting after that. If anybody interested. In, uh, which we're going to, it's going to be a podcast. We're going to record it, and we'll see if, if it's interesting enough. We'll, we'll share it with the world as we review 50 tips, quick tips to improve your user stories, uh, amongst other great titles. And uh, yeah, we should have the, the marketing meeting coming up. Um, yeah, hoping to review the whole marketing Trello board and look through all our you know ad campaigns and uh, uh, goals in Google Analytics and so on and so forth. So I'm yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully do that at the top of the hour. Um, you know, take a little break, do it after the scrum. All right, sounds good. Lots going on then. Um, so, Matt, how about yourself? How are you doing? Oh, good. Um, let's see. With Redeemify, uh, looks like Armando was out for a while, but he's back and he gave us a thumbs up on what we're doing with the UI. Um, there's a ticket to update the instructions on the main page. I want to get that. In and then send him maybe a picture of the, because then I think the UI will be finished for for the users. Um, the only other thing I'm working on is a little bit of event manager. I got a pull request in. If if you want to take a look at that quick, Sam, it's, it's just uh, it's filtering by the date. 
and um, I put in a new ticket to start working on the API stuff with that. Let's see that? I think that's it. All right. Sounds good, Matt. Thanks. Uh, Paul, how are you? Thanks for rejoining us. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, yeah, I'm, um, of course, working on Met Plus and um, struck a bit of a problem with um, an XHR te uh, RSpec test. Uh, and um, I think I need a bit of help with it. Uh, it's not in an area that I had touched myself, so I'm, I'm not sure if I. Oops, uh, didn't do the merge right, but anyway, there it is. Um, yeah, okay, Paul, we can connect up right after this if you'd like, mm. if you have time. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess I'll go now, and then we'll go over to Arash if he's still yeah, he's there. So for myself, uh, I worked on... A wiki ed story delivered last week. I'm going back and forth on comments coming in from Sage against that. Refinements, if you will. Uh, Sage is a very exacting um, software engineer in terms of how he what, likes to see things structured, which I appreciate, actually. Um, so there's that. We're still working on that. On Met Plus, I reviewed lots of stories of the weekend. Uh, stood up a lot of UI stuff. Um, gave some feedback. And subsequent to that, I saw Sigu and Hinesh and Arun all weighing in over the weekend, working on their stories. So a lot of great activity there. I haven't had a chance to look at what they've done, Laura, on the UI stories, subject to my comments. But I'm going to look at that this morning sometime. Uh, I may reach out to you and ask you to take a look at one or two of the stories if I, if I need your approval for them. Sure. Hopefully it wouldn't take too long. OK, great. And uh, I groomed the backlog on that plus as well, merge one story. On SHF, I delivered a PR yesterday. Um, so wait and feedback on that. Today on Met Plus, we have a client meeting at uh, about six hours from now. Um, so I'm going to re review the agenda. I'm going to review the revised PRs, as I mentioned. And uh, Sigu has asked me to ask three, uh, I think it looked three of the students as collaborators to the project. So I need their GitHub names, which I just messaged Sigu about, and then we'll be able to add them. Um, SHF, I'll be reviewing a bunch of PRs that came in last week and over the weekend as well. And I think that's it right now in terms of today's activity. So, um, Aresh, are you there? Would you like to give everybody an update if you would? Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, well, uh, lastly, I've been doing some experiments, uh, building application for Slack. I've been re-implementing the, the async bot. bot and, and that code is in my GitHub account. Account now. I I'm I'm trying to to add to this project some tests. But um, I would like to to clarify with Matt and Sam uh, about how we will, we are or we want to consume the event manager service from from its API or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all. Cool. Uh, Matt, uh, Pat, you're muted. There's that. Yeah, that's great, Andres. Thanks for joining. Um, so I guess that's it for the Scrum then. Um, so in terms of pairing up, I guess Paul and I can continue to pair on this session or create another well, one. Maybe since I've got the broadcast control, do you want yes, to? Yes, I'm sorry. You're right. You, you keep it. In. Yeah, maybe I can just chat to, to Matt and uh, Aresh in here about uh, the other things. and. Uh, uh, Laura, are you free for the marketing meeting in 15? I've got a two o'clock phone call that I need to take. Sure thing. Well, we'll record and just join us if you can, or no problem. Okay, great. Thanks. All right, we'll do a review of the board. Okay, sounds good. Paul, I'll connect up with you in a peer program in a minute or two. Okay. Speak okay. to you then. All right. Thank you. See you later. Cool. Bye Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, I guess so. So, event manager. I guess one thing I'll, I'll mention is that I had a um, premium pairing session with with Marion over the weekend, in which I was talking about like my imagined architecture for the event manager. Um, 
I've got a video of that that um, could be shared. Of course, that's like an hour and a half, lots of different bits and pieces. Um, I, I'm just trying to think of what's the most ef efficient uh, way to, to, to work on this. Um, what, what are your thoughts, Matt? Oh, um, I think I've got a pretty good idea, but do you, do you think you have a, are you imagining maybe something different, do you think, than I? Than well, we've, we've, got, we've got an interesting situation here in that, you know, like, th there's this, you know, I, I've, I've got a, you know, I, I started the event manager, um, you know, based on, on, on my idea. Um, but maybe like my idea of how it goes is less important. Like if you're that there's this kind of thing like, or there's a danger of, I can I can in any given situation end up saying, well, that's not quite like my idea. You know, it should be done this way or what have you. But I'm not like an oracle that kind of knows what the right thing to do is. You know, and the the danger is that by doing that too much, then people who've got great, interesting, and exciting ideas are you know, feel, oh, well, Sam doesn't like it or he's not interested and that's not worth doing. So I and mean, the last thing I want to do is kind of quash enthusiasm to take things in, in different directions. Um, at the same time, there's the, the, the kind of reason for Agile Ventures to exist rather than it just to be the collection of open source projects is the idea that, um, you know, there's kind of working with the constraints of, like, it, rather than just building one, one's own thing completely willy-nilly, that there's an idea of, okay, um, there, there's a, there are clients of some kind and we've generated user stories about those clients and that for any given piece of work that we're doing, we always try and connect that back to how is it fitting into the big picture of supporting those clients, which is then why I kind of in, in sort of got a ticket and I say, oh, let's work out what the scenario or the user story is for this and, and so on and so forth. So um, well, maybe we're jumping the gun maybe and doing API stuff. Well, well it, it's an interesting thing. We, we, many thanks to Aresh, you know, the, 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 the critical thing that I wanted to achieve with I Event Manager was to work out, like, if the web WebSockets would work, and, you know, they were on Heroku, and, and it all probably would, but it's like, you know, before you start making big plans about how everything else will go, it's, it's good to check these things. Maybe let me just show you what I was describing to Marion uh, yeah. on, the, on the weekend. Um, I, I mean, one of these things, and this is like a, 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 a draw, I mean, I'm kind of like, I was just sort of do, doing this, uh, and, and almost as like it's a drawing on a whiteboard, it's probably better um, to have it, what's the word? Um, you know, it's better if you can see it being drawn and explained at the same time rather than the end result. But um, I mean, th this was my kind of like, uh, this is like the, what we might call the new Agile Ventures um, website architecture. And I, the so what I was describing was that like, like what we've got at the moment here is we've got like uh, in our Rails app, and, and I was here like saying hypothetically, ultimately this might end up being at some you know endpoint there um, that would be separate from the main site. It, we've got this. We've got uh, the UI built in, as, as as Arish has rightly pointed out, that could be split out. Um, but so we've got, and I was just explaining to Marion, you know, going through the steps of, yeah, so we get this, it makes a, you know, uh, it opens the WebSocket. Once the WebSocket is open, and that's what I'm representing here, then, you know, other incoming events just cause that to be updated. So that was just this little, and then potentially you can have multiple WebSockets, if that makes any sense. Um, and so this is, you know, a, as a standalone, that, 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 that's great. Um, what I was imagining as our, uh, traffic on our site is increasing, particularly due to these Google AdWords, is that, you know, um, while we've worked to try and scale, you know, agileventures.org, a common pattern for other people like, you know, Makers Academy and, um, and Craft Academy is we use a middleman site as the front end, right? And then, you know, that, that means that the static pages are just kind of laid out on GitHub pages and there's really no, uh, you don't have to worry so much about the load. It's not that the Rails engine has to keep, or Nginx or whatever on the front has to keep, or Puma or Unicorn, has to keep on like scaling up. And, you know, as you add more stuff to your Rails monolith, um, the, the whole site gets slower and slower and slower. You just have your, you know, the information that you want to deliver to folks on the middle. You guys both familiar with Middleman? Yeah, it's like a, um, 
manage, page management system. Right, right. And, and it's basically like the Rails front. It's like, imagine you took Rails. Like, That's where I was scrubbing to Marion. You take Rails, you slice off the, the, the back end, all the active record stuff. Any of your data, it goes in YAML files. And then, but you've got partials and templates and all of that, the same stuff. So um, what I'm imagining is a different architecture for the Agile Venture system where we have, you know, the like that Agile Venture, and we've done, you know, we, we have this, this is, we have one here. Like we did for the nonprofits, this is, you know, blazing fast um, middleman compiled into just the HTML materials that gets pushed to GH pages. It's all, it's all great fun. Um, but so what I'm imagining is maybe doing another middleman site that kind of replaces the Agile Ventures thing here. So the data, I mean, there's loads of fast on my computer, but anyway, so it's just that, eh, you know. Um, but so in principle then, you know, it, it could be that, you know, uh, rather than using the API, you know, you'd have the event stuff on events.agileventures.org and you'd have a single Rails app, say, that has, you know, you, you wouldn't even need the API. You would just, you'd read it, the user, having got their basic information from the, the, the middleman site, would then be, you know, if they wanted to go and like, see the list of events, they would click on a link and they would come and they would land on this separate Rails app, right? If that makes sense. And, and the, the example here, so for example, Makers Academy, they've got their, you know, middleman site. When you, which is, you know, super fast and just on GitHub pages, when you click apply, and you actually, when you go on here, you end up on a different URL, right? Okay. And this is now served by a Rails app. So, and there's, you know, fewer people getting to this point, so it doesn't need to have so much performance, if that makes sense. Yeah, now can I see your diagram again? Yeah. What are the different, you got projects, users, events. Yeah, let me, let me share this. So you can. No, I'm glad you shared this because. Yeah. I was kind of assuming the the main site would live as is, and. Well, that, that's another. You know, the, the, there are I different. Like, you would assume that yeah. for now. And... Well, I think the important thing, the important thing about all of this is to not is not to, is to feel is not to feel that somehow that this is exactly where we're going. I mean, I'm just this is just like one speculation about a a way that we might evolve things, like. At the moment, all we've got is this um, this chunk here, right? In in very very you know raw form, where we're just checking that the web sockets work, and you know that we can do the API things. And these are all fairly trivial things that that kind of kind of work. I mean, it could be that we that it's simpler to stick with the existing Agile Ventures site um, and have that reach out to the the, the API. Um, I mean, the idea as Armando and Dave talk about at the beginning of their course, like what Amazon have done, is that by <coughs> kind of unbundling your larger system into a series of different APIs, that you make it so that one of these can go down and the others can still sort of partly function. You're kind of building a bit of redundancy into the system. Uh, and that similarly, uh, what's the word, um, that by having these clear APIs, we're kind of decoupling these things. So you know, people can build new stuff or based on the APIs that maybe you didn't anticipate they were going to build. And also, if you decide, oh, well, there's this, you know, the user's API kind of, oh, well, there's this great thing in Golang. You can rebuild parts of your stack, uh, parts of your system in a different technology stack relatively quickly. As long as they stick to the API, it actually doesn't matter, um, you know, uh, like which languages or which underlying technologies these things are written in, as long as, you know, you've got clearly defined APIs and those are consistent, then you suddenly have a lot more flexibility. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, totally. Um, the danger, of course, is that, you know, by splitting it all out, is that, that does, the hot, does the complexity of do, going with the microservices outweigh the benefits you get from the microservices? And the answer to that is we don't know, and it depends, right? So um, it's, uh, you know, it's a, like, the thing that you're just describing there about, you know, ch changing the way the JSON API works for the events thing. If you're interested in doing that, that's that's fantastic. What I worry about is that you're anticipating problems that we haven't encountered yet. Do you know what I mean? Well, I just from having worked on similar systems, I. 
I think there are things that are, we're going to encounter. Well, right. But I think that the... It's kind of standard to use JSON API um, mm -hmm. serializers. It's right, just well, right. But you, you say working on similar things. I think that the, 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 the difference here is, is that maybe we'll just never get to the API being used. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like... Um, I think if we take the assumption that, uh, like, what's the word? That the... Oh, yeah, you just have two, two different sites, you mean, one for the events? Right, right. It, it may be that, the, 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 for, for, for us, with our level of resources, that actually the API is something that we end up not using. So, like, oh, it, okay. it, like it seems to me is that the, 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 the cart before the horse, if I can use an expression there, is that, like, it's not clear yet that the API is going to be the critical load-bearing part of the system. So, like, the, the assumption that, that you're working against there is, ah, yeah, if we're going to have an API, or there's all these things about APIs, these would be good to have, but we haven't yet demonstrated that the API is going to be the kind of... And again, it's still, it's like it's all, you know, hand-wavy yeah. in the first instance, because, you know, we're both just using our intuitions about, about um, what to go for. To, to, to use a different example, um, where we are on the async voter, which also um, Aresh was mentioning, is so we just had this thing, we just experienced this thing of like I was running a local support vote and you accidentally clobbered it with the event manager vote, and we've now I was anticipating that that was a problem that we, and we hadn't yet fixed. Now that we've actually encountered it, that kind of like crosses a, a, a line for me that says, ah, oh, this rather than it just being an anticipated problem, it really we've really kind of run into it, and our kind of ability to use the voter in those things is kind of, um, you know, is being limited by that, that possibility for collisions, which is sort of, it, it now increases my desire to, um, to move on that. I mean, I was also going through explaining to um, uh, Marion about the relationship between the async voter, like we built this whole RESTful node API, right, as, as you know, as you guys know, we're not actually even really using it yet, are we? Like, um, I've forgotten his name. Uh, Adrian's got this pull request in that hooks them up. But actually, in terms of the functionality that we actually need right now, because the bot seems to be reasonably reliably hosted on AWS, actually connecting it up to the RESTful node API backend, like right now, is kind of less of a priority, even though it would be great for that data to be even persisted and for us to use it in the long term. But it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. Um, the thing that I was saying to, to Marion, I mean, Arish, I'm kind of like switching off to a different thing here now, and I should go to the marketing meeting, but, um, you know, there's adjusting the code of the system so that it can support multiple, multiple votes in parallel. If it does do that, then we can't get up, come up to that user interface issue where the user has to specify what they're voting on in order to deliver their vote, which is making me think actually having like a dedicated event manager async bot and a dedicated... Um, um, what's it called? Local support. So basically, people know. Oh, I just talked to the to the. I don't know. Or but no, actually, I guess is yours, you, Arrest. Yours gets around that because they they are actually voting on that plugin in the actual channel, and so it's always obvious what they're voting on. Uh, sorry, can you repeat, please? Because <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Too fast. Yeah, I'm, I know I'm I'm terrible. I'm awful. I talk no, but, uh, no, 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 don't be sorry. Don't you don't dare you, you don't be sorry. Me bad. Me, me wrong. Um, me talk too fast. It's silly. But so, with your system, because the the the, the buttons are in the channel, mm -hmm. we always know exactly what the um, users voting on. Uh, yes, that's right. Because well, um, uh, you have that those buttons respond to an action. And in that action, you have uh, some data like who bought, who presses the bought button, right. uh, where was the channel. And, right, you get the channel information, whereas so, the, um, the, the, the version that I've done that's doing the direct messages, yes. so you, if, you lose that information. So yeah, so, so yours would be a solution to that, right. If you assume yeah. you have only one channel per project, you have the project. Yes, and then the, that, that would be much more efficient in terms of, then, but is this, is this hosted on Heroku, this, this bot? Uh, yes, now it's on Heroku. Right. And I'm, I'm planning to host it in another service called no, uh, Now, but yes, uh -huh. because it don't have downtowns or the, the machine, machines 
doesn't uh-huh. slip. So right. okay, cool, cool. Yes. Oh uh, well, that that sounds like a very profitable direction. Then, if it can, yes, yes. I mean, I was sort of tempted by how hosting multiple bots because we can now do that, and also that we might get this money from Amazon Web Services uh, for being a nonprofit. But um, uh, okay, so anyway, well, that, that's I think that's very useful for you and I, Rush, just to. You know, I'm very excited about your development in in that context because this also, this interface. Like what I've noticed is, other people with, with the, the thing I prototyped is that they were getting confused about how to do the voting, right? Like they were DMing me, or they would they would DM like the async voter channel and so on. Whereas your interface here is much less easy to get wrong. You know, the interface appears there. They don't have to switch. Do you know what I mean? Yes, it, it looks uh, more usable, I think. Uh, right. I mean, it, it looks more usable, and it also it stays in the same place. They don't have to context switch. Mm-hmm. They don't have to go and look somewhere else. They can stay. Yeah. So that's so wonderful, wonderful work there. Um, yes, yeah, so I'll have to get into your code there uh, at some point. Um, but so to come back to the event manager, I mean, the, the, yeah. the question comes back to you know what's the best way to make progress on on this kind of system. Um, the, the 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 thing for 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 me what I what I was leading Marion towards um, and I created a ticket for. Um, let me go and see. Let's go and do the other meeting. Um, um, boom 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 boom. Uh, yeah, I mean the the I can certainly try and have a look through this one. But, uh, uh, again, it's it's um, yeah. I'll, Trying to look for it. the issues. Who you? Uh, what did I do? Yeah. So, like at the moment, yeah. So you commented on you saw it already. Is the, is that the moment? It's it's just a trivial change. And so what I was saying to Marion is, and she was saying she wanted to do some stuff on JavaScript. Is like, okay, let's try and actually make that change more noticeable, and let's like dive into the bit of the code where the the change takes place, which of course is in this JavaScript uh, here. And so rather than just doing this make it be a bigger change so that we can actually start to move towards something that looks like one of um, you know these yeah, yeah. event pages and, and sort of think about that that layout um, the the AP in my mind API the it would be yeah, more um, gone but we shouldn't kind of the, the what we're getting at is not to worry about the API for now well or I think the the thing for <laughs> me the the, 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 the uh, when, when we're looking at a, a, a kind of a loop of some data, the, the critical thing is to do the, have you heard of this term tracer bullet? Yeah. Yeah, it's to do the tracer bullet. So you're at the moment anticipating use of the API saying, oh, if we get the API set up a bit differently, then that'll make it, that, that'll be useful in the long term. And it might well be so. But the, like if I look at this setup, you know, wh- whether this is like middleman over here or it ends up being the existing uh, Rails site, it's the consuming of the API that's the critical thing. Like, I was just point, pointing, like, the question there for the middleman one is, yeah, like, this is the stuff for if you were doing a middleman site, could you pull in and just have some JavaScript on the front end that would consume this third-party service, okay. right? Um, so the, the interesting thing from, for, for me, if I was playing with it, would be, OK, well, we've already got a scaffolded example of an API. Um, could I? Be can like you know if I wanted to present a list of events in a static site, could I be doing that via JavaScript? And what would the performance be like? And would it be horrible to set up? And, and what about testing and so on? Um, but 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 again, like it's I was assuming that it was a Rails consuming the API, in which case Active Record serializers would be easiest. Uh, maybe. Um, or it would be. I mean. Yeah, yeah. That certainly sounds like one, yeah. one way to go. Yeah. It's just a choice. There's like three you can yeah, use. Sure, sure. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just. That, that, not, yeah, that sounds like one way. But so yeah, I mean, it might be, you know, in terms of, like, it feels like it would be a lot of work to sort of stand up the new middleman site, and and you know, it might be more performant in the long run. I mean, the interesting thing would be to look at the existing event system in website one and do a spike on website one and say what would happen if we re- replaced the this events page. And, and it was getting all of its event data from the event manager API. Um, yeah, that's what I suggested, but I yeah. don't know if that's. 
if well, that's the long term direction, then is that a good? Well, I think, but again, don't get me wrong. I, I'm not laying down the law and saying this is the long term direction here with the middleman side. I'm just saying this is this is something that I'm speculating about. And I think what would inform whether we use this or whether we did it from the rail site would be experiments that showed, for example, like two kinds of experiments that I think would, would both provide us useful information to help us make the architectural decision in the long term would be one standing up a middleman site and doing some, you know, consumption of the data there. But or equally, you, you, as you imagine, doing a rail site and having it consume some of the API, like like taking a fork of the, of the, of the existing... Sorry, and second. They, I've done systems that do that and they work, you know. So. Oh, yeah, no, I, I'm sure that both of them work. I'm sure a spike would... Well... Because I know it works. <laughs> well, you see, the thing is, you say you know it works, but then there's also, like, that, like... You know, there's that it's there's no it works. It's been done before, but that's different from doing it with the latest versions of the of the things. I mean, I, I know yes, yeah, like we can I, we can we can extract get API data through, but there's like how much work would it be to you know like I, I think there was a, there, there's a lot that would be learned from actually doing it in both with the rails and the middleman um, and consuming the existing API rather than polishing. The API in anticipation of how it's being consumed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I mean, you say polishing. It's just you, you got to serve JSON one way or another. And I was just suggesting one way to do it. It's no harder than any other. Oh sure. Well, I'm not, uh, so I, I, yeah, it comes back to if you feel, feel feel strongly about making the change, it's probably not worth discussing it. It's just my. Uh, I don't, I don't feel strongly about it. It's just yeah. I, I don't see that I was we're poli I was polishing anything. I was just. Well, it's, 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 yeah, to, 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 it, like, but you're changing the way, like, it seems to me, like, there's an existing thing, it's delivering some JSON, right? And you're changing the way that it delivers the JSON to give some more flexibility down, down the road. And, and so that it's kind of like, yeah, you, you can do it, but it doesn't tell us, like, the process of doing it doesn't, to me, uh, give us any more information about how well or how performant either of the architectures would work. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if we spiked a version of, the Agile Ventures events, where the events controller was ripped out, and and this page instead, you know, used JavaScript to talk to the. Um, I mean, because th there's different ways to do it as well. Like, because the JavaScript could be from whether it's Rails could be talking directly to the event service API, or it could be going to the back to the Agile Ventures app, and then the app could be doing a server to server communication with the uh, events API. Right, and the same with middleman. And so, to to me, like working out the bigger architecture, it's doing those kinds of experiments on the relative performance of those things that would tell us: Do we want to go with a Rails or middleman? And if we do want to go with Rails, do we want to go with a JavaScript-based API calls, or do we want to do server-based API calls? Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. I'm just not sure we have the manpower to. Do all these experiments? <laughs> well, absolutely, we're extra incredibly resourceful. Yeah, I'd like to, yeah, uh, to have a direction and go that way because I, it all works. I, it's my feeling. I, well, no, it, and I know it all works, but it's like they, they have different performance characteristics. So that I mean, you're absolutely right. We're very, very resource constrained. But so it seems to me that when we're resource constrained, what we should do is we should focus on those things that are unknown rather than those things that we know. Now, you're saying, yeah, I, I know it works. I agree. And uh, all of those different ways. We work. know that the middleman is more performant. So if you're, if you're. Well, I don't know that we know that. I don't know that we know that. Like with, you know. With, screen. It was, your site is a lot slower than the. Uh, yeah, the but that doesn't. The, 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 I mean, I think what we, we, the middleman has the potential to be more performant, but I don't think we know that in, in reality. Like, the, and the, the thing is, the middleman would make sure that the information from, from Agile Ventures website one, it would be performance. What is it, you know, it might just be fundamentally simpler not to have any API thing and go off to just, you know, and redirect the user to this new site and then they can interact with their um, events there. Um, yeah, that's kind of like, what I'm thinking we do for now since. Right, right. So if we're doing that for now, then it makes more sense to work on, you know, UI. just yeah. the UI than it does to the API. Yeah, that's that. And that's, uh, th yeah, and that's what I said. And was okay. what I'm getting out of this conversation. So yeah. you're, Go on, Arash. you're suggesting to make a clone of the existing events uh, tab of the Agile Eventus site 
uh, or so, well, uh, well, better. The developer, the re-implement re re the event uh, tab in. Uh, you're, you're saying a word there, Rich. You're saying the event tab. I'm not sure. I can't. Yeah, tab um, or button okay. or section. Well, you know, IGLI are meant to have many sections. One of them is the event section in the top. Yeah, well, you, you're saying types like T Y P S. Yeah. Is one of the different types. Yes, the the. I mean the uh, the. Um, yeah, um, I wrote in the chat tab uh, or section. Oh, tabs. Or, right. Or, right. Tab. Yeah. 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 It, 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 indeed, they they do happen to correspond to. The tabs there, and, and yes, the idea is that the different, uh, you know, kind of domain entities, which are corresponding to uh, the tabs there, could be um, uh, broken out into being their own separate services. I mean, yeah. Okay, so the idea is to uh, <coughs> re-implement that event logic uh, in the event manager with all the UI and without taking care of all the API for now. Um, that, that that's one way to go. That's certainly a simple way to go. Um, and in the yeah. future, when we clarify more of the things, we can provide this event manager application uh, with a REST API or, or another kind of thing. We can be consumed from middleman or any static site generator. Yes. Yes. I yes. In, 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 indeed. I mean, I, I guess I, uh, just to go back to, I think you're you're, you're correct there. Um, Aresh, and that's as a result of the discussion we're having. I think both um, Matt and I are leaning back towards that. I just wanted to go back and agree with Matt and say, yes, we are very resource constrained. But so in the context in which we're resource constrained, we could be spending those resources to look at which of the different models is more performant. And I, and I think we don't know at the moment which combination or, or which possible architecture would actually be the most performant. And I think it's not... An, you know, there's also like there's optimizing for different things. Like if we go the, the the if we do do this thing where we just have you know the existing Rails site and then we're kind of handing off to an events.agileventures.org which has got its own UI, we've got to kind of synchronize the CSS and styles between those two, um, which is what Makers Academy is doing. They use the same CSS you know bundle on on here of their own, of their own design that they have on their middleman site. Yeah, that's where there's a lot of choices without without a long term direction. I, you get so well, I, I, absolutely. But so, but the the it's no, like there's big think... projects you can't really do totally agile because you you need, you need some. Uh, well, I I think I, I think I disagree. I mean, I think I think you can impose you can impose an arbitrary direction, yeah. and then and and then like maybe get some uh, perception of. There being, you know, you do, doing work that has coherence or, or, or what have you. I mean, I think that the, but the, the the thing to be doing is, you know, enumerating all those things that might or might not be important. I mean, so so like with the, and, and kind of writing them up. So we've got the situation where, you know, if we go the route that we're talking about here, we've got the kind of having to coordinate the styles between the two things, um, and you know, we've got like, you know, is can we get the login the um logins the yeah and then they sort of like log in from one system to another and maybe you know it's sort of if we, if we do that maybe it pushes it. but so i think the important thing is to enumerate all of these things and then work out which of the things are the experiments that can give us information to help us make those decisions does that make sense yeah and, and also if you could put in that picture redeemify because sure yeah we're we're even further down the road with that and yeah, it's, absolutely. It's and then, kind of important to know at this point, because otherwise Armando is going to wait years to get his. Well, I well I agree, and and, and the yeah. difficulty again with all of these things is you know yeah. like having any of any of the effort go into things that will actually make have a consequence and a positive impact on 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 you know income and the rest of the site and and so on. So I'm kind of fifteen minutes over for the marketing meeting, so oh, I better yeah. go on to that. But feel free to come and join that because. In some ways, in the marketing meeting, we'll be talking about how changes to the website and the website architecture can support actually increasing the revenue. Yeah? Yeah, and I think that's a... I want to double that point about Redeemify because we, we're at the point where we're supposed to be okay. developing an API right now to interact with something. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, let's. What let's is that going to be? What, let's bring that into the marketing meeting. Shall we? <laughs> Great. Yeah. Uh, so you've got the. I mean, I'll, I'll keep on sharing these links, and we can do more drawings. Yeah. Let's wrap that up here. Yeah. We'll, we'll um, just take a two-minute break, and we'll have the marketing meeting, and I'll, I'll maybe see one or either of you there. Okay. Bye for now. All right. Bye for now.